Hello everyone and welcome to another JavaScript Mastery video. In this short video, I have something interesting prepared for you. GitHub CLI brings GitHub to your terminal. It reduces context switching, helps you focus and enables you to more easily script and create your workflows. It is completely new and it came out yesterday. So. In this short video, I'll give you a quick rundown of all the features so that you can stay up to date and start using the GitHub CLI. GitHub CLI offers a range of commands to manage your entire GitHub workflow. With GitHub CLI 1.0, you can run your entire GitHub workflow from your terminal, from issues through releases, call the GitHub API to script nearly any action and set a custom alias for any command. You can also connect to GitHub Enterprise Server in addition to github.com. So let's get to the commands. How can you actually use it? To be able to use the GitHub CLI, of course, we first have to install it. To install it, you can head to cli.github.com. This is not a sponsored video. I just want to show you this amazing tool. And there, you're going to see how you can install it for your own operating system. You can install it using Brew or download it for Mac, Linux, or Windows. After the installation is done, we can head to our terminal. In this case, I'll be using the ZSH iTerm2 on Mac. If you'd like a guide on how to create your terminal like this, you're gonna have a lot of branches here and a lot of customization. Let me know in the comments, like this video, and I'm gonna do that in the next one. But without any further ado, how can we start using the GitHub CLI? Let's explore a workflow in action. And on the way, I'll teach you a lot of useful commands. First, we're going to clone an existing repository. For example, I'm going to head to my project chat application repository because there we have a lot of pull requests and issues to work with. We'll be able to explore a lot of commands to see what those are. And then with all the usual options like HTTPS, SSH, cloning, now we have a third option, which is the GitHub CLI clone. For that, we can use the GH repo clone. And then the only thing you have to do is specify the owner and the project name. So for now, we can copy that right there, head back to our terminal and simply paste that command. So once again, if you wanna clone it, it's gh repo clone and then the name of the owner forward slash name of the repository. If we do that, it's immediately going to be cloned right here. That's it. We can CD into that project by doing CD project chat application, just like so. By this point, the process might be a bit different for you. GitHub is going to prompt you to authenticate with your GitHub account. A new tab opens in the browser and the rest of the process is pretty straightforward. You just click authenticate and you should be right back at the step where we are currently. Once that is done, you can navigate to the cloned repository and check if there are any issues that are assigned to you. GH issue status. With that command, you'll be able to see if there are any relevant issues. As you can see, there are no issues assigned to my GitHub account, but there is one issue mentioning me. Type error cannot read property. So someone asked that about one day ago, so I can immediately jump into fixing this issue. If there are no issues, or if you don't feel like fixing them right now, you can also check all existing issues by using the command gh issue list. With this, you're gonna get the list of all the issues in the current repository. You can see problems with the demo live, problem with the chat container, common to easier, all of the issues right there. And you also have the access to the information about when they were posted. Now let's add a new branch to a repository. So I'm gonna clear it and then I'll say git checkout dash B and we can name it new feature just like that. I'm gonna switch to it. As you can see, using the ZSH, now I can see that I'm currently on the branch new feature. What we can now do is type code dot to open this in our Visual Studio Code to add some changes. As you can see, our project open, and now let's go into SRC and just make a demo change, so just so we can see what is happening. In this example, I'll just take this endpoint and bring it outside of the React component, just like so, minor change. Now we save that, we can open our terminal right here in Visual Studio Code as well. You can go to view and then terminal right there. Now we can add that change by typing git add. 
then we can commit the change. We can say something like refactor, and then we can push it. Of course, since we are on a new branch, we have to copy get push and then call the set upstream flag origin new feature. If you run that command, now our change is pushed. Great. Now we can close our Visual Studio code and go back in our terminal. Now that we are finished with adding that new feature or fixing the bug, we can use the ghpr create to create your pull request on GitHub. So if we do that, now it's going to start the process of creating a pull request. As you can see, it is creating a pull request for new feature into master. We can even specify the title, but you can see if we just press enter, it immediately knew that this was a refactor. So we can just click enter. We can type something in the body, but we can also just skip it and then we can submit it. That's it. And there we go. Immediately from our terminal, we created a pull request. Isn't that amazing? Now your teammate can also check out your pull request and view the diff with the ghpr diff. That's going to show the difference of the code you made. Right there, you can see it right in your terminal. We move this endpoint right here to this line right there and we added a new line. It's not that handy as seeing the diff in the code, but for quick fixes and quick pull requests, this is going to be more than sufficient. Finally, if your teammate is happy with what he is seeing, then he can run ghpr review and then he can write a certain review or he can simply approve or request changes. So in this case, let's approve our PR. And we can just skip the body. We can submit it by typing Y and there we go. Now, of course, we cannot create a review nor can we approve our own pull request. So that's fine for now. Finally, after the pull request is approved, you can go ahead and merge it right from your terminal with ghpr merge. If I call that, you'll be able to see we can create a merge commit. GitHub CLI will even offer to delete your branch locally after the merge. So if we do that, you can see merged pull request 24 refactor, deleted branch new feature and switch to branch master. It's doing so much things for you. Now let's actually open this in our browser to see what happened. If you open your repository in GitHub and then go to pull requests, you'll be able to see that it's not here. We didn't even get the chance to see it live because we immediately merged it, but here it is. If you go under closed here, you'll be able to see that our refactor is right here and you can see everything we've done. You can see our commits, you can see that we merged it, you can even see that we deleted the new feature branch. That's it. Here are the changes, and you can even open them to check the diff right here. This is amazing. We've done all of this, created a pull request, made changes, submitted the pull request, reviewed the pull request, and even deleted the branch, and that's it. Everything from the terminal using the GitHub CLI. These were some of the most common commands you'll be using in your day-to-day -day workflow. If we type gh commands, you can see that we also have a lot of available commands, alias, API, completion, config, gist, help, issue. But if you want to know more about this, you can visit their manual. So if you go to cli.github.com forward slash manual, in here you can see in detail what each one of these commands does. For example, we can create different gists, we can also log in, and more importantly, we can use all of these PR requests. We can check out, we can use checks, close, create. You can even create repositories if you go right there. We don't only have to clone a repo, we can create it, fork it, or simply view it. Looks like Microsoft leading GitHub is a good thing after all. Just to finalize, let me tell you my favorite things of using the GitHub CLI. That is creating and forking your repo, creating, deleting, uploading, downloading, and even managing your release creating a review and checking the status of your PER, opening, reviewing, tagging, creating and checking the status of all the issues or one of the issues specifically assigned to you, creating different gists, making a request to the GitHub API, generating shell scripts for GitHub CLI commands and setting up aliases for most used GitHub commands. These are the features that you're gonna find yourself using most commonly. With that said, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe. See you in the next one.